erasing someone's experience and reframing it in but I didn't erase anybody's experience but by by saying it isn't racist you are erasing someone's experience no yes you are inherently incorrect why that's not the definition of racism what's the definition of racism definition of racism is believing that somebody is inferior solely based on their race that's prejudice racism is institutionalized no. discrimination yes it is no it's not yes it is no, it's not yes it is Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial subjects. For this installment, we decided to take on the rapidly growing notion that Thanksgiving is a racist holiday. There's definitely a, a racist history to Thanksgiving. It's a genocidal holiday. Thanksgiving. Lies. Eh, I don't buy it. So we headed to UT Austin to see who would be willing to step up, sit down, and change my mind. First up, meet Elizabeth. What was your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Stephen, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, yeah, let me set this up for, I, I know you said you haven't seen the show. I have not, no. It's basically a setup. It's not meant to be a debate. It's meant to be a conversation where we rationalize our positions sure. on controversial topics. Uh, granted, this is a controversial topic. I'm sure that you've heard there's been, I mean, there's been a lot of, of, of noise about actually removing Thanksgiving from being recognized as a national holiday because mm -hmm. people believe that it's a racist holiday um, or steeped, rooted in racism, colonialism. I don't agree. I don't think it's a racist holiday. I think it's possibly the most inclusive holiday that we have in the United States. I think it's a wonderful holiday. Has done me good, will do me good. God bless it. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Before we go to you changing my mind, what are you most thankful for? Um, I'm thankful I get to go home uh, next week. I haven't oh. been home in three months. So. I thought you were saying get to go home and leave here. I'm like, well, we just started. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been a week. I live right outside of DC, so I haven't been. Oh, okay. I haven't been home in about three That'll months. That'll be nice. <laughs> Fortunate, nice. But... You'll get a, a kind of a blast of winter and then you get to come back. Yeah, exactly. It's Even though sometimes here it's been a little colder than it's been up north. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. We'll see. So uh, you are more than welcome to express to me what, what you disagree with and change my mind. Sure. So I think that there's a difference between the origins of Thanksgiving or the origins of the country and the Thanksgiving that we celebrate now. Okay. So I, what I was overhearing was kind of hard to hear, but um, is you believe there's there's a lot of um, things to be thankful for, um, you know, being able to live in this country um, when many people are un unfortunately live in uh, countries that have terrorism and where women are not allowed to have specific rights or where um, specific groups are terrorized. Um, and so obviously I am very thankful to live in this country because uh, we have so many rights and we have so many freedoms. But um, I think that y there's a difference between um, recognizing the foundations of how Thanksgiving started and being able to say, I'm thankful that we live here. However, mm -hmm. our origins were um, in many ways very based on European and white supremacy and based on the ideas that we came to um, to what was, I guess, the new world and now is the modern United States. Um, and we basically said, and not necessarily on the day of Thanksgiving, this was not our intentions, but right. um, because the day of Thanksgiving in many ways uh, for a lot of people was going to be saying, well, we were able to break bread with the Indians and we were or the Native Americans and we were able to say, listen, oh, we you respect caught that. You. The last guy said Indian and I was like, eh, I don't have to believe yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. So sorry, Native Americans, I should, yeah, because it's not, that's obviously a pretty uh, controversial term. Um, but Whatever. So, well, so, but some Native Americans refer to themselves as Indians, so it's kind of... Yes, that, they do. So that's kind of one of those things. I'm just going to use the term Native American just because I don't want to be... Sure. Yeah. Um, but we were able to uh, have this peaceful, uh, you know, dinner with them and basically say, listen, we're here, you guys are here, we'll be here together peacefully. But after that, that's not really what happened in the United States. I mean, um, when you think about Mexican annexation and when you think about the, the Native Americans who lived here and were pushed back into Mexico, when you think about the um, the Alamo in San Antonio, that's a big thing, um, uh, is even at the Alamo, they play some kind of video that basically says, you know, these, they're these noble Texans and um, in reality, the Mexicans at the time who lived in Mex in what was Mexico and is now Texas and, you know, the bottom part of the United States, um, they let the Texans live. They let Americans come and live in the United States. The um, Or in Mexico, sorry, <laughs> a little scrambling my okay. words. But, um, they were the ones who were letting people come and live here, and they were saying, listen, we're not going to be peaceful. We're actually here because um, you, we actually want you to come here because we do not want the imperial um, the imperial family in um, the more 
southern parts of Mexico wanted to make sure that other other countries didn't come and take away the, the northern parts of Mexico and that's why they asked people from the colonies to come and live in um, in that northern part of Mexico but what ended up happening is they seceded from Mexico right. um, and basically we immediately started acting at, um, with terror you know the Texas Rangers who were incredibly racist and killed and hung Mexicans um, we have a lot of ba uh, we have you know Christopher Columbus that's some that's another pretty controversial like Columbus Day is a I pretty call it Indigenous People's Day. Exactly. So um, another and you said Indian Native American is Indigenous People's Day. Exactly. So Canada's First Nations. You're never going to get it right. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll try, but I, I do understand. Yeah. So um, there's you know uh, a lot of controversy over Columbus, and that's because when Columbus came here, um, you know. First of all, he thought that this is where we get this term Indians from because he thought that he had reached India. He had obviously, he had very much not. Um, but he had treated the people um, with this air of European supremacy because he, you know, immediately went and raped women. He, you know, killed people. And it was all this very big terror that obviously, I mean, this is different from the pilgrims who are you are, you are dressed up as. But it basically shows that a lot of this country's foundings is based on, and even if you, if you, um, separate the pilgrims from you know Christopher Columbus um, it's still based on this idea that we thought that we were able to go and conquer a land and say listen we know that you live here and even if we're gonna give you stuff it's that we think that we have the right to take over somebody else's land and that we have the right and this is what a lot of what we've done um, over the years when it came to the, you know the um, the post-World War II and with communism is that we decided that it was necessary to go and save other countries from potential from communism mm -hmm. and so what that led to was that and I know this is kind of off topic but I kind of all think of it no, as I want to let you speak because yeah. I, I don't want you to feel as though I'm interrupting yeah oh, oh no not Just at all I'm make sure this turkey hat is not covering the camera do you want to wear the turkey hat yes okay good thank you that. all right go ahead Just make. Um, Just make sure you give it back. <laughs> I will. I will. No expense. I hope this doesn't have lice in it. That would be. No, it does not. It's yes. brand new from Dollarama. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, so, a lot of what we did with uh, communism is we were going to, especially. Um, these countries like Guatemala and we were going in and we were giving them weapons and we were giving them uh, training on how to fight radicals who were pro-communism and at the time most people didn't know a lot about communism. And we also gave day, them STDs. You know I did not know that but I'm glad that I can add that to I'm just I'm just tossing on to all of the white American guilt because then well, I'm gonna disagree yes. with you. No but I totally are, understand. But I'm not disagreeing. But uh, glad I get to keep that into my brain. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that no, into it's my true. knowledge it's station. True. Yeah. I'm not a you know I'm not a conspiracy theorist but that is one thing that actually I think Hillary Clinton publicly apologized for that we knowingly infected I, I believe it was uh, I believe it was Guatemalans with STDs. Yeah and Guatemala um, I've actually um, Which is horrible wrong. Oh it's uh, awful. I want to make sure that I'm very clear I'm not no, like yeah, yeah. no STD. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, saying, I'm just story. tacking it onto it, and then I'll say something that I'm sure afterwards you'll be horribly offended by, but I want you to continue. I don't think your wife would be happy if you were pro STD. No. So, yeah. No. Um, so, I, but I definitely think, I've been to Guatemala a few times, um, and I definitely think that um, what a lot of the United States has done is we've taken our roots of pro, you know, European supremacy, um, not supremacy, well, supremacy. Uh, white, in terms of white supremacy, obviously where we are coming from was primarily uh, white or Spanish, which can be considered more on the white side. Oh, they're on the white side of Europe. Sure. So, um, I just think that a lot of our roots are based on white supremacy and that modern day Thanksgiving, which is the Thanksgiving that you seem to uh, be very adamant about, is that yes, we're very, ex that we should be very thankful for the people that we have around us. That's actually not the case I was making. So can I? Oh, can sure. I yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I talked for a long time. I, that's okay, <laughs> yes. I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not interrupting you. Uh, but no, what I was saying was specifically Thanksgiving is a specific day. You're talking about 1621. You could say a week. It was a week of feasting. Sure. Um, in 1621, and then it became a federally recognized holiday by Abraham Lincoln in, uh, I believe it was 1863, after okay. the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And this was after the Emancipation Proclamation, and he said, you know what, we need a holiday to unify Americans, uh, black, white, south, Confe you know, the Confederacy, the Union. Uh, let's look back to this account that we have in history in uh, 1621 where the early pilgrims with a uh, Wampanoag, Wamp I, I always get the name wrong. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's yeah, the best that, pronunciation that was, Those are the tribes to. that they came to when they came to an, a, sure. an abandoned village that had been left by the French at that point. 
um, was a day in 1621 where they feasted with them. So it's a specific time that's recognized as a holiday for Thanksgiving because it was precisely about the old world and new world bridging that divide yeah. and breaking bread together. And that was also symbolic of what happened after the Emancipation Proclamation, the country was at war. That's why it's designed to be as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. Any religion, race, gender, the whole point of Thanksgiving is to give thanks for what it is that you do have. And it's important to remember too that there were 50 years of peace after that. Yes. 1621, so for mm -hmm. a very long time. So uh, what I am saying is that Thanksgiving, a lot of people say, well, it depends on what you think Thanksgiving. No, it doesn't depend. Mm -hmm. There's historical documentation. This is why we celebrate Thanksgiving. Sure. It was this feast, 50 years of peace afterward. That's a wonderful thing. It's not racist at all. Um, now, if people then want to talk about, and you went through a whole list, I mean, you went all the way down to Texas Rangers. Yeah. Um, at first I thought you were saying Walker, Texas Rangers. Like Chuck Norris has nothing to do <laughs> with the early pilgrims, but you were going all the way through that. And this is what I see a lot of people doing. You did it to a more extreme example, you know, yes. going down to the Alamo. But people say, well, because afterward there were uh, abhorrent acts committed, therefore that uh, taints Thanksgiving. And what I am saying is, no, A, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is not exclusive in any way. Uh, it's actually designed to be inclusive by, it's inclusive by design, and that sets a precedent which you would have to apply to every single holiday. From okay. Christmas to uh, Passover to to uh, Ramadan, any holiday, because you could say, well, after Christmas, there's they crucified Jesus, or there's the Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. You could go through the atrocities that obviously, you know, Jews are not blameless either, and of course they've been the victim. This happens throughout society where people sure. are sometimes, sometimes they're the nail, sometimes they're the hammer. Mm -hmm. For some reason though, there is um, a disproportionate focus on kind of what you brought up, white European settlers who came here as though they are singularly unique or responsible for these acts of evil, and it comes up around the time of Thanksgiving, okay. and I don't think it could be less appropriate or less productive. I think it's divisive, okay. and I think it actually fractures us as opposed to celebrate, uh, taking part in a celebration that should uh, encourage unity. So the only thing that, um, and I, I see, I mean obviously I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but these 50 peace, the, the 50 years of peace and unity that you spoke of. Yes. Um, and then you also spoke about um, the Emancipation Proclamation and how that was getting rid of slavery. Right. However, um, just because it got rid of slavery didn't mean that African Americans in this country were, you know, they still went through so no, much. No, I'm, I'm not saying at all that but, anyone is blameless. But it's the but it's the idea that you're saying that. What no, 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 the only reason I, brought, I want to be clear, the only reason I brought yeah. that up is because that's when it was federally recognized as a holiday. Well, yes, so, but what I'm so. trying to say is that um, Thanksgiving, I guess in your kind of sense... Uh, no, no, it, I'm, I want to be very clear. Do, you, do we both agree that that is why we celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes, that okay, I, good. yes. It's yeah, not just general no, pilgrims I, and, and aboriginals or indigenous, it's yes, not general. Like, it's there's supposed, a very specific reason why we picked that day. Yes. And it's 1621, and then it goes to... Uh, 1863 with Abraham Lincoln declaring it an official holiday. Yeah. So it's just because a lot of people think there's wiggle room, there's no wiggle room as to why we celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, now, if you want to say we shouldn't celebrate it because of and go down the list of grievances afterward, you, you can do that, and I'm more than willing to talk with you about that, but I don't think that that's fair to uh, tar and feather a celebration because we choose what we celebrate. Well, I don't think that we shouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. And that's... Um, and like I was saying before, it's because I think there's so many things that we can, we have to be thankful for, but I think that there's a separation now sure. between the original reason for, for celebrating it and why we celebrate it now. More people, I think, when you think of uh, celebrating Thanksgiving now is more like, oh, I'm thankful for my mom, I'm thankful for my dad, you know, I'm thankful like that... Like an episode of Family Matters. Exactly. And so, uh, or, or Full House or something like that, yes. you know? And that's why I'm, I'm having this conversation because I'm amazed at how many students here have no ideas of the actual history of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, I think it is important for them to know because I also think it's, uh, if they understand, it's far harder to lead them astray with lies of mass genocide. Yeah. Well, I mean, mass genocide is a complete topic that. Or would the take unique, forever. the singularly <laughs> unique evils of colonialism. We can go on down that trail afterwards. Well, I mean, obviously. Let's start with Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I, I know I did it. You're very talkative, and I can be that way too. Let's start with Thanksgiving. It seems like we agree on that. Thanksgiving is a good thing. Well, it's so it. I think that. There are two, but there are still two different topics that I okay. think it's okay to go and say I'm thankful for this, but I think that we still have to recognize what this country has been built on and the backs of who this has been built on, you know, um, and the actual entire history rather than just thinking about this one day that kind well, of... No, but, but, that, but my point is, this is one day. It, we celebrate that one day. You can go into any history classroom right now. We mm -hmm. just had several students. I would think that you'd probably admit this. 
almost always taught, every student I've asked so far said, I've been taught basically about the genocide and the evils of the settlers. None of them were aware of the evil and barbarism that the natives committed against each other. Well, that, I mean, I have been taught about that, actually. In school? Yes. Okay, good. I have been taught but that, about but that. But that's, that's also, it's an intellectual fallacy to say, though, well, because this happened afterwards and applied to Thanksgiving. So I want to make sure that we both agree, Thanksgiving, great day to celebrate, good. Uh, and then separate from that, we can get into what you disagree with on the founding of the country, but that doesn't apply to the celebration of Thanksgiving. But would you not say that the, if we're thinking about the foundations of this country and then thinking about, see, I feel like you're trying to separate the two days, but then, or yes. this day and the actual foundation of the country, and they shouldn't be separated because we have to think about the fact that they, there was a time before Thanksgiving when, you know, when we first, first of all, when. We started, yes, we were a, the, well, I'm not a direct uh, associate with the Pilgrims, so I can't say we necessarily, but. Uh, have you done a 23andMe? Uh, yes, I have actually. No Pilgrim in your background? Uh, not that I'm pr you aware don't see this of. A icon? lot of okay. Polish Jew. So, really? yes, and also French. Good for you. French colonial. There aren't many left, obviously, Polish Jews. It was. Uh, yes, it was an unfortunate time for us I during know. that time. Terrible. But, yeah, but. Um, I would definitely think that, and this is just my opinion, obviously, because we're just swapping opinions. Sure. But um, I think that there has to be an association between the two, just because if you don't think about everything that has happened in the past, what it, why can't you be? Why can't I be thankful that we're no longer committing these? Uh, okay. So let me ask you: You're Jewish. I am Jewish. Right? Yes. So do you celebrate Passover? Yes. Okay. How do you celebrate Passover? Uh, it's not necessarily, see, the thing is with Jewish holidays, a lot of them are not necessarily celebrations, they're reminders of the past. Okay, sure. And so I, de so I think that Thanksgiving in some ways should be and, and, like and that. Passover would remind you of what in the past? I think that all the atrocities that Jews have gone through in, okay. in the past, I mean, every, you know, especially like Yom Kippur is one where we think about how we didn't have food, we didn't have time to get out of Egypt. Let, let me ask so you this, and I, lest I do not want to sound like an anti-Semite, but I think we'll agree here, would, none of us would say that historically Jews are blameless in certain conflicts, right? Well, I mean, I, I, that I can't get into. I would well, I'd I have to say just I'm not at educated your holidays, enough. At your holidays, do you also have a day of mourning over the atrocities that Jews have committed? Um, I personally no, but I also okay. don't think that I'm educated enough on those topics in order to have like an actual conversation about that. Just, sure, but my, my, yeah. my, my point is, it's applying the same standard right to Jewish holidays. Yeah. And I think, by the way, I support Israel's right to exist. Uh, I certainly support them in the face of Hamas and yeah. uh, you look at Hezbollah and you look at the Six Day War. I'm far more conservative. That's why people think I'm Jewish and call me. <laughs> Uh, I'm working for Jewish shills, but uh, I certainly wouldn't say that any group of people are blameless. But the point is you're saying we need to celebrate this American holiday and recognize the fatal flaws in the United States. Doesn't sound to me like you're applying that same standard to Jewish holidays. Well, to, I, I, I think that that's definitely something that is flawed and I also don't know, I wouldn't say I know enough about how to change the Jewish system. I would, if, I, if I could, I would definitely try and implement something like that, but I think there's also something okay. to be said about... Well then let's hear your suggestions on how we implement it to the Americans System. Oh, I just want to point out yeah, that yeah, we choose holidays to celebrate and people shouldn't have a gun to their head to say, you can only celebrate Passover oh, if yeah. you also go over the Levon affair or whatever no, it is. I, you know and what I, mean? I definitely agree, but and I don't think that there should be definites in regards sure. to how people celebrate holidays. I mean, there are people who don't celebrate birthdays and things like that, and sure. usually you're not blameless on your birthday. Like, oh, well, you committed a mass murder, so I guess you can't I have a birthday. I turned 32 uh, this year. Really? I was a prick. Oh, well. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I turned 19 this year, so oh. I, I was not a prank. <laughs> okay, good for you. You're, you're one step ahead of me. Okay, yeah. but I say it because you mentioned we should also include this sort of day of mourning, this day sure. of recognizing the atrocities. Um, I think this is being singularly applied to Thanksgiving, and I think it's being singularly applied I, because of what you presented as white European supremacy, which I disagree with, but let me... Sure. I want you to finish that thought, and then we'll kind of move on. Oh, okay. So. Um, Basically, I just think that I think it could be applied to a lot of different holidays. Obviously, maybe not some of them like Valentine's Day and things like that. But I don't really know the origins of some of these holidays. And I bastards don't... at Hallmark might have to pay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I don't know. And I don't know um, enough about like the origins of Christianity. Um, I don't really know that much about the Crusades and things like that. So I really can't make too many arguments when it comes to other um, religions and other holidays that we celebrate, which are often religious based. Okay. However, um, what you're suggesting on Thanksgiving is you can celebrate Thanksgiving. But 
No, so yeah. I actually think that what we should do is we should just constantly be mindful of what we have done in the past and so that we don't repeat these actions in the future. And, and so, during that time, so let me ask you this, because you, you just mentioned you just went down a whole laundry list, right? Yes. Of bad things that white Europeans did. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, do you also think that we should be very conscious of the uh, incomparable barbaric acts of evil that the Native Americans committed against each other on that day. Um, well, the including only the Mexicans who you mentioned, the Aztecs, the Incas. Well, yes, the, Az the Aztecs and the Incas. The however, Mayans. those were within. Sorry, their... Incas were Peruvian. Incas were Peru. Yeah, the Aztecs and the Mayans are. Gonna but should they the not be able to celebrate any national holiday without recognizing the horrible evil, far worse than anything colonialists did that they did to each other, like ripping someone's heart off, cannibalizing them in front of their wives and kids? Sure. Should they not be able to celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Well, first of all, Cinco de Mayo, I don't think enough, enough people really know the origins behind Cinco de Mayo. Well, the so point I think, is yeah. any sort of national holiday. Yeah, so... Can they celebrate um, any holidays in Africa, even though they were the ones who started this, what we know as the modern slave trade, and it still goes on there? Yeah, so I definitely think that, obviously, you can argue that everybody has... Sorry, this hat's a little... Right. Um, every, that everybody is flawed in some way. However, I think that in order to really make some kind of uh, progress in the future, you have to um, really... It's kind of like, um, I, I guess it's Catholics, you know, they uh, they talk about their sins a lot and they go to the priest and they're like, this sure. is what I've done. And so I think that there's something noble and actually very progressive in being able to say, this is what we've done in the past. And now I'm thankful that we're here and that we don't, that we're not currently living sure. in that situation. And so in the future, we now know that this can't happen again. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit on you here, so I hope you appreciate this. Sure. Not in a way that's controversial, but it's I don't okay. think that you could argue anyone has done that more than Western European Americans. No one has been Ooh. browbeaten and admitted to guilt more. For example, in other countries, right, You, if you were to conquer people or commit mass genocide, you subjugate them. You don't give them back land. That's yeah. not what happens, which we've sure. done with Native Americans. Um, when you talk about the acts of barbarism, you know, there was no mass genocide. That's just not accurate. They were committing murder and massive numbers. If we talk about giving the land back to Native Americans, which I, I don't know if you've suggested or you necessarily support that or it was somebody else. You don't, so oh, you don't that, support I, giving uh, land well, back? I mean, I, I hadn't brought that up. I okay, do believe so in like reparations, actually. Oh, okay, so who do we give it back to? The so, Mohicans or the Mohawks? Because they well, were slaughtering just, each so other. I believe that the there should be... The that's a, but this, is, this, is, this gets very technical, well, though. No, but my point is, there are no de national days of mourning where the Mohawks and the Mohicans are recognizing the mass atrocities that they committed. Scalping, we learned from them. You're not seeing that from the Mayans. Mm -hmm. This is why this land was conquered and it wasn't mass genocide, by the way. It was 50% of the natives are wiped out. The estimates are about 30% of settlers. So okay. that's not really a mass genocide. How many Gestapo were taken out by Jews at Auschwitz? Zero. That's what genocide looks like, right? Okay. This was a war with one side that had horses. I'm sure you know they hadn't domesticated horses. No, they had not. They didn't even use a wheel. Yes. So this was a very regressive society who lived here, by the way, for thousands of years. We would both agree that. Thousands of years. Let's go 1621. Okay. 200 years we end slavery. Sure. We didn't even need to end cannibalization or burning people alive or ripping out their hearts, but we ended slavery. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. And I think trying to make it seem as though white Western Europeans, as though it was based on some form of racial supremacy, are uniquely responsible for these acts of evil. And that is what you propose. And I haven't heard anyone Wait. propose that there should be days of mourning for Native Americans to atone for the crap that they've pulled, or days of mourning for the Jews to atone for what they pulled, or days of mourning for the Palestinians to atone for what they've pulled. It always seems to be white European settlers when the fact is in the United States of America, we did commit acts of evil, that's human nature, but we are singularly unique for ending so many acts of evil in record time. However, you could argue that um, white Americans, white Europeans are yeah. in a position of power compared to um, so many people, consider, uh, especially Native Americans, especially um, uh, you know, other African Americans, you know, uh, name any other well, We're in a position of power now because we won the war. Well, so, but to continue with my point, I think that a lot of policy is... But do you no, not agree with, do you not see what I just, do you not agree that there's, that that's a, a subtext here that is important? I definitely, Because every time I, mean, I say, well, what about NATO? You go, well, I don't know enough about that. I say, well, well what about the true. Jews? You go, I don't know enough about that. But you seem to have a laundry list of all your grievances with white European settlers. Yeah. Um, and you also don't seem to know a lot about the acts of, uh, the acts of evil that were committed against them. Well, again, we need to understand both. We need to understand that they go both okay, ways. Sorry, did you say against the... Uh, against against Europeans, and certainly okay. against natives from natives. Yes, yeah, so... No one was more brutal than Native Americans than I would Native just, Americans. my only argument to that would just be that you're talking about, you know, um, natives committing atrocities against natives, and that's in their own, but this was when they were in their own land. This was their land, this was their, this no, was their wasn't. civilization. No, it I mean, wasn't. The it Iroquois, was a... it wasn't their land when they were going in, going well, hard in the Algonquins. I mean more of like the Not idea that the this Apaches is where they had and the lived Mohawks their entire lives. No, but okay, so what, so what, what separates it is a, is a pond? 
Well, the fact is they maybe. were going into someone else's territory, killing, raping their women, burning them alive because they wanted to take their stuff. Yeah. We didn't go in, kill them, and burn them alive. We went in and we traded, for example, the island of Manhattan. And then they said, sometimes there were atrocities committed, but a lot of the time, we bought land. Yeah. And then they said, well, no, hold on a second. We don't have the same concept of personal property. Good yeah, example that of that is, is Manhattan. Yes. Manhattan we purchased for 60 guilders worth. Now, it's been taught in this school, I believe, that 60 guilders accounts to $25 worth of junk. I've read this in an academic, I think it was UT, could have been a University of Massachusetts, something like that. So <laughs> don't fact check me on this, but this was written. 60 guilders equi uh, equates to $25 worth of modern junk. 60 okay. guilders was actually nearly 10,000 animal pelts and lumber and nut woods. That sure. was given for the island of Manhattan that the Lenape and Canarsie did not want. They live in what is modern Brooklyn. It was mm -hmm. purchased. We settled there peacefully. Mm -hmm. Then they come back in and say, hey, we want it back. I thought this was a lease because they don't have the same concept of personal property. Yes. Then a war starts and, of course, the settlers win. Of course. That is very different. I would say that is far more permissible than the Mohicans going in and just slaughtering all the Mohawks they can find. I think that the, and scalping them. The only thing is that when you think about it, so the settlers who came in had obviously been educated in a different in a different way. They had different values. They had different right. upbringings. I mean, as you said before, we, they the Native Americans who had lived there before they didn't have access. They hadn't domesticated m many animals or horses, and they hadn't why, they didn't have access to the. You know, they were that, for thousands of years. That's a good question, but I think a lot of it is based on their religion and a lot of that they respect. Pantheism. They respect nature. They respect. Um, they didn't respect nature. I, I mean, they, I, they, they they hunted and fished more species to extinction per capita than any people in the history of the world. They I didn't don't care think, at all. I didn't really mean it by that in that okay. sense. I think there was more of a respect towards like the. Um, Physical nature. Truth. Sorry, I just get heated because I learned this stuff in school. No, and then I was okay. really like, wait, they fished them out of existence? We, we no, learned the that's Pocahontas. Okay. They're like, wait, they, they didn't have the wheel? Wait, they never used horses? Everything I learned was a lie. Yeah, I and mean. And then I had to learn about what really happened with these, these turf wars with a lot of the pilgrims and early yeah. settlers. And so I think that that is really, I mean, you would be able to argue that those were just like underdeveloped civilizations. Why this? Well, Why don't we say they're under, they didn't use the wheel? I just, because I don't think that, I think that know development this. is kind of um, however you think development should be. I mean, some people believe that spiritual development is more important than actual like material development and being able to, sure, some people think that it's incredibly important to have access to electricity, but other people think that it, you know, having, it, that's really like a basis of what people's values are based on what they believe is like material. Not goods. material, I'll talk about rights, equal rights. Yeah. Rights for women. We both agree good things. How, I mean, but not you enslaving and raping women and kids. That, yes, that wasn't their would, values. Yes, but I, I mean, are some, some cultures better than other cultures? I, I would not argue that some cultures are better than all other cultures. I would argue really? that, that, that cultures are different. Okay, well then we just disagree. I think that the culture that says you can't rape and scalp women is better than the culture that says you can steal women. I would like to say I would like to say that in that type of in that standpoint that that's a different. I was thinking more on the idea of like cultural values based. But on those like, are cultural values. I wouldn't. That's really a big say reason that, for the conflict, right? The yeah. big reason for the conflict conflict is when early settlers come and they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't get to enslave their children and burn these people alive. Yeah. And by the way, let's, you mentioned uh, the Mexicans. I mean, you go down there, do you know how many conquistadors there were? No, I don't. And this is not a trick question. Yeah. I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know because I wasn't taught in college. Sure. I don't know about you. I was taught in college. The conquistadors came in and they, they conquered these people and they were brutal and they were barbaric and they wiped them out. Yeah. Is that what you were taught? Um, yeah. Okay. That, I'm just saying that's what I was taught. Yeah. There were about 500. Yeah. Do you know how many natives there were? A lot more Many, than many tens of thousands. Do you know how many tons of gold they had? That I don't know. Do you know how they procured said gold? By enslaving because they yeah. had no regard for human rights whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so they enslaved people, usually after raping and beating them and stealing their women if they were fertile enough. And they would say, okay, you have to go and get us gold. And your options are get us gold or die. Yeah. So, Cortez came with 500 conquistadors. Do you think he can take over an entire land? Because you went through Mexico, you went through all that in the atrocities. Well, Do you think he can take over and conquer an entire land with 500 conquistadors? Uh, What's required is natives who were so upset because of the barbarism and how mistreated they were, they felt that they were, and they knew they were better treated by European settlers who came and they said, we're gonna take our chances with the guys who have the boom boom sticks. Yeah, I actually, that's, I talked about that briefly earlier. I might not have talked about it to an extent because I was kind of right. listing things, <laughs> however. That's um, why I just kind of went down my list. No, that's true. And so um, that is that is 100% true. Um, and there were, the only thing is that, and that's that why was the regarding- the conquistador culture is better. I say it's superior. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll agree to disagree about that. But I mean, I see, I see what your point is. The only thing that I have to say about that is that they were Mexico, ripping out hearts. 
well, of children. So How can you disagree that that's an inferior culture? I don't. I definitely. I, I'm sorry. Like I and I no. respect you sitting now, but because you spoke, but ripping out hearts. I don't believe that and that sacrificing is a good, them. I don't but that was that. a central value to the culture. How can we not say the culture that says no, 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 no? We don't rip out hearts to the sun god, and we're going to subjugate you so that you don't continue to rip out hearts to the sun god. How can you say that one culture is not better than the other? Do you I believe just, that? I mean, I've just never really believed that it was. Uh, specifically our right to go in and say that type of thing. It's just not, I mean, I'm just not pro- But it was their right to rip out the heart? Uh, to be honest, if you live in that the... society, I guess that I guess what? That, that is. Yeah. But the people who were born didn't get born like, oh, I'm signing up to have my heart thrown down like apocalypto. I think that they're- Do you see what you're saying right now? It's yeah, unbelievable. I... And as a Jewish person, especially when you really understand the importance of Jews, and I believe is Jews need a homeland with Israel because yeah. they had their rights completely violated for a long time. Oh, sorry, I mean, what do you that. think would happen if if right now, today, a, Palest a Palestinian ripped the heart out of a Jewish child to sacrifice to, to, uh, to Allah. Well, I don't think that that would necessarily happen. Of course it wouldn't happen. But I'm also saying that this was, I mean, we're talking about a time that was thousands, well, not thousands of years ago, but it, or it, it originated thousands of years ago. And but so it was thousands of years ago with the settlers too, is my point. Yeah. My point is they had thousands of years still ripping out hearts and cannibalizing. Western Europeans had thousands of years plumbing and the wheel and horses. Yeah. One is better, in my opinion. Yeah. You don't think one is better? I. It's just that I don't think that we have the right to go into other, to other civilizations and basically just try and... Uh, it's sure, it might make... It, I mean, I think that there's something noble in saying, sure, we could try and make your life easier, but I don't think that we have the right to say to tell other people what they're doing wrong and this is what they believe in. This is their, it's a religion. And I think that bringing in so Judaism it, into it is actually, is not, is not in my opinion, a very good thing just because I think why? that, I, well, I think that- I brought Christianity into it too. I'm saying I believe that the Jewish culture is better than the ripping out hearts culture. I mean, I would also say that how, I just, I, I don't really like bringing the Holocaust into things like that just because I- didn't bring I, the Holocaust into it. I mean, it's been brought in just before, but uh, okay. I definitely think that talking about modern day Judaism and then uh, referring to older religions, the Mayans, which to this day still practice, but do not continue with these ripping out rituals. And maybe that's because- Because it's impermissible. We well, maybe that's because we came in and we said, maybe you shouldn't do that anymore. Right. But at the same time, we shouldn't be saying, instead, you should convert to Christianity. Instead, you should convert to our religion because it's superior. I think that well, namely it was because at that point, the reason we had to do it was because to ensure that people weren't being cannibalized and having their hearts ripped out, yeah. the only sort of fail safe was, you're gonna put a cross next to your initial there so we know that you know, you've know you moved on from heart removal territory. Yeah, the only thing that I think in that is that that just starts the process of assimil assimilation that still is Great. very prominent. You you like assimilation? Yeah, I think as a matter of fact, that's the biggest argument against Native Amer that genocide against Native Americans because most of them assimilated. And most of them yeah. assimilated because most wanted to. I, I would actually think that a lot of them, and I'm, obviously I didn't live during that time, so I really can't make a... See, I'm older but, than you, but I wasn't quite Quite alive at that time yes, either. I, I'll, I'll give you that one. But I do have some grays here in the sideburns and it <laughs> makes me sad. But um, I definitely would think that fear was a reason that a lot of people assimilated and that's a reason a lot of people assimilate today. Is fear of having their hearts ripped out or being cannibalized by other natives. They said, I, I, whatever I, is going on with these new guys who have the funny translucent skin, it's got to be better than being cannibalized and burned alive. I'm going to go with you. We gave them some fire water and let them duke it out and then came in and picked up the pieces. And I just think it's important to understand the history of this. I, I agree that there were, for example, there were some trades that went on that were terrible. And there were some acts of evil that were absolutely committed from uh, European colonialists. I want to make it very clear that I'm not denying that. Sure. But in this conversation, you have presented it as though they are singularly unique while equating all cultures, well, but holding one culture accountable. And what I am saying, and the reason that I support Thanksgiving not only as a day, but as a concept, and I'm grateful for the settlers, mm -hmm. is that Western European culture and the Constitution and American culture, a culture of ideas, not a people, not an ethno state like we have with Native Americans, um, I believe is a wonderful thing. I'm very glad that that happened. I'm glad that the colon uh, colonialists came here and that they created the kind of country that we all get to live in now. Um, I'm okay with it. And I think they are singularly unique and responsible for ending acts of barbarism and evil across the world that the Native Americans continued and uh, were continued in continents to the globe, many places to this day. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't think you can hold them accountable as being the only people who need to mourn their acts of evil. I think instead they should be praised uh, and held accountable for the fact that they are singularly unique in stopping a lot of that. But don't you think they should also be held accountable for the atrocities that they have? They have I think no one's been held more accountable than they have. I mean, I think yeah. that there have been, if you, I mean, I've been to like Germany and they have entire uh, museums, thousands of museums, like it just seems like thousands of monuments, museums, uh, talking about the Holocaust. I think Germany too. sucks. Well, I, think, I think a place take that up with Germany. I think a place that bans books because they don't want you to know about their their distorted well, history. I don't think they uh, still do that. Uh, they did it up until only like in the last several decades. And you can't speak freely. There's no freedom of speech in Germany, by the way. It's a hate crime if you talk about the Holocaust in unsavory terms or Nazi Germany, which I am not at all. I'm saying not at all pro Holocaust, pro pro alliance of of of, uh, of good, pro Israel. Okay, I'm probably more pro Israel than anyone you know right here. But I do think that if someone is going to be a Holocaust denier, that shouldn't be a crime, and it is in Germany. I don't think that yeah. a country that has no freedom of speech and that bans books. And by the way, in the realm of history, that's pretty new. Germany went really to new. war with the entire world twice. Yeah. Well, Germany and allies, but yeah, I mean, that's... The Axis, yes. Yeah. But that gets to uh, cultural relativism. We see them as the axis of evil. They see us as the axis of evil. Difference is, we weren't the ones gassing Jews. So I say that objectively, yes. they were the axis of evil. No, yes, I, I'm not disagreeing about ah, them. So now we them. can objectively say that gassing Jews, a Holocaust, is objectively evil, but we can't say it's objectively evil to rip out the heart of an unwilling native to sacrifice it on a pyramid. I think that you're twisting my words a little bit. But I don't. I mean, I mean it, that, that's fine, but um, okay. I definitely think that the, I just don't think that it's our right to go in and take away what we've done and to this day is we have basically put Native Americans to the side and we've put other ethnicities to the side and we've basically said if you want to live in our society you have to assimilate yourself and you have to learn how to become a true American. And what I does mean, that mean? Uh, that's, I have literally no idea what it means to be a true American because our country is literally based off of immigrants and so the fact that today we don't even live in a world where where we live in a world where people believe that English should be the national language and where yes. entire um, populations are, you know, told that they aren't American enough because they speak Spanish or because they don't, you know, talk or look or dress like they're American and there's no real definition. I'll tell you what a true American is. A true American is someone who, this is the beauty of being American, and I think you conflated two things. You said we cast aside Native Americans. We didn't. Most of them assimilated. Most of them willingly, some of them unwillingly. We didn't cast aside minorities. We freed them. And then we said, let's have oh, a national wow. day of Thanksgiving and let's celebrate this in unity. Uh, we didn't cast women aside. We gave them equal rights and then said, okay, let's all, we made progress. Progress After happens in stages. Years of I know, our as country. opposed to the thousands of years of Native Americans. Good luck on them getting the women right to vote. So I don't think, you say we cast aside Natives. We cast aside all these people. None of that is accurate. None of those things are accurate. Because, and then you say we're a nation of immigrants. Well, hold on a second, I thought we just cast immigrants aside. Neither one of those we things do. are true. Neither one of those things are true. The truth is that unlike Native Americans who wanted an ethno state, and by the way, an extreme example because they wanted only their tribal bloodlines to continue, and you see this in other countries across Africa, you see it across the Middle East, being a true American is subscribing to a set of ideals. And those can be found in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the amendments therein. That's the wonder of the United States, and that's why so many Native Americans, so many Haitians who migrate here, Italians, Jews, po Polish Jews at one point, of course, uh, uh, Irish, have all become American because it's about subscribing to these ideals that people will traverse the entire ocean. They will, they will brave the stormiest seas to try and willingly assimilate to American culture. And, and I'll leave it on this note, I believe that's because it is superior and we ended evil to a degree that has not been seen before the United States. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. And that's why I love Thanksgiving. And I'm grateful that we both live here and I'm grateful that you wore the hat. Thank you very much. Sorry, there's a little bit of water there, so I don't want your bag to get wet. What was your name? Safa. Safa, nice to meet you. Steven, nice to meet you. So, um, yeah, I'm sure you know the topic of discussion today. Uh, I know that we're often taught, especially in schools, Columbus Day, Thanksgiving, that it's a racist holiday. Uh, I don't agree. I think it's a, a wonderful holiday that should uh, unify the nation. I think it has done me good, will do me good. I say God bless it. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. And if you disagree, you're more than welcome to change my mind. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to scooch in, you can't, so you don't have to lean. Yeah. 
So I Thanksgiving is actually my favorite holiday as well. Oh. I think that where people where it gets controversial is the origin story that we're taught about it. Sure. That um, Native Americans and pilgrims um, peacefully got together sure. and um, shared a meal. And that's the story that kids are taught. That's kind of the narrative that we push, especially now that it's, you're dressed as a pilgrim. Um, I appreciate that you recognize yeah, the garb. Um, this wasn't all for naught. <laughs> but um, I saw a video um, that was made in 2015, and it's from Cut. Dot com mm -hmm. and it's a video that is a series of interviews um, that they interview Native Americans and they ask them to describe Thanksgiving in one word right sure. and these people say massacre um, racist um, false holiday um, sure unpeaceful these kinds of things so I think if we're asking um, Native Americans how they feel about the holiday and that's what they're saying then shouldn't we listen to them oh sure you can listen to them it doesn't mean that that's what the holiday is Okay, so... So before we get to why is it your favorite holiday? Um, I really like cooking and oh. eating. And I, that's what the holiday is about for me. It's about giving thanks to the people in my life. Um, I just think that when people talk about how Thanksgiving what, what is... What are you most thankful for? Um, I guess being able to go home to my family and having that's that a good meal. One. Good. Yeah, right. But I think that when people are talking about how Thanksgiving is controversial, that's what they're talking about. So how sure. do you how do you come back to that? Well, it's incorrect. It's incorrect, okay. Yeah, it's incorrect. So Thanksgiving is a celebration of, uh, in the 1620s, when the uh, the Pilgrim settlers did have a meal of Thanksgiving with the, uh, the I think it's pronounced uh, Wampanoag. Is that, do you know, I want to yeah, make sure I'm getting that right, Wampanoag. Uh, Wampanoag. And they did celebrate and then had, uh, had 50 years of peace after that. Now, if we want to talk about the fact that there have been some acts of barbarism committed. Some uh, acts. Yeah, of course, committed against Native Americans and of course committed against Native Americans from Native Americans themselves, uh, obviously. Um, yeah, that happened obviously throughout the historical timeline, but that didn't happen at Thanksgiving. And uh, it's interesting because, you know, do you know when Thanksgiving was recognized officially as a federal holiday? So this is why I actually think it's the least racist holiday okay. out there, uh, because it's proactively a holiday designed to symbolize unity. It was uh, Abraham Lincoln who wanted to, after the Civil War, after some, here, hold, do you mind if I pause no, real quick? Because I don't have that kind of pull. I assume there's a hunchback up there who has an Antifa face mask. Um, so after uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, actually very soon after, Abraham Lincoln thought it would be a good idea to have a national holiday that symbolized unity uh, for all Americans at this point, black Americans, white Americans, and so they did look back to that 1921 original Thanksgiving that symbolized the old world converging with the new world in 50 years of peace. Okay. So in looking to create a unifying holiday across all racial divides, he looked to a moment in early American history, before we were officially a country, where that happened as well. So that's why we celebrate Thanksgiving. But even if, if, if something proactively promotes unity, if there are people who don't feel that way, sure. then those people were marginalized and affected by the acts of barbarism that, that, you, just, that you said happened. But not by, not by Thanksgiving. Did it happen throughout history? Sure. But yeah, not by Thanksgiving. But, that's, but if Thanksgiving is about a moment of unity between pilgrims and Native Americans, yeah. but the rest of the time that those two peoples interacted was filled with violence and inequality, yeah. then why is it just that day? Well, a couple of things. First off, it wasn't the rest of the time. It, it was, was most of the time. Many no. Millions of Native American people died because of colonial people coming over. Yeah, well, well, it's estimated actually about 50% of Native Americans that's, probably were That's half out. the people. That's yeah. a lot of people. Do you know how many of the settlers were wiped out? That, they came here. 30%. So, in other words, it's not a genocide. As, uh, it is I believe. a genocide. Well, it's actually not a genocide, uh, by definition. Um, I mean, I don't they know, brought I, the disease. Well, hold on a second, guys. Let's just keep the conversations between two folks. They did bring disease. Yeah, they did bring disease with them, and it did wipe out um, quite a few Native Americans. That was actually before the Thanksgiving. You know, that's why they came back to an abandoned village. I'm sure you're aware of that, because they were wiped out by diseases. Well, largely like, they hadn't encountered because they hadn't domesticated most animals yet. You know, they hadn't domesticated horses. They had no contact with horses. They were technologically very regressive. They didn't use the wheel. Um, so what happened was there was a moment of peace there for 50 years. Uh, we had a large, a very long portion of history that was very peaceful with Native Americans. There were multiple alliances between new settlers and Native Americans because Native Americans were warring with each other. And we do choose, though, as a holiday to celebrate this moment 
of unity. We choose to celebrate a positive moment. I mean, you can look at Veterans Day or Memorial Day. Well, there are horrible actions yeah, that were committed. Yeah, I feel the same way about those holidays as well. Oh, you do? I do. Same thing with Fourth of July? Yes. Same thing with Christmas? Yeah. Ramadan? I'm Muslim, yep. Okay, because obviously slavery is still practiced across the, the Islamic world. So you believe that... Okay. No, is it not? I mean, it's practiced across the entire world. Not, not just the United the States. Islam, not just the well, Islamic not the United world. States. Well, the world isn't the, the United States versus the Islamic world, is it? It's the world, the Islamic world, all different kinds of parts. Well, in comparison to, for example, the settlers in modern America. The point is, but we're not celebrating that with Ramadan, are we? We're not celebrating the Spanish Inquisition when we celebrate Christmas, right? Christians committed some horrible actions. We're not celebrating war with Native Americans when we celebrate Thanksgiving. We're celebrating a moment of peace and unity because it shows that it can be done. I think what people want is an like, acknowledgement that these things happened. I've already done that. Right? Yeah. Which, an acknowledgement of these racist things that did happen and implying that maybe the narrative that we push isn't true and that acknowledging that there was a disagreement and violence between these people. Sure. I think people just want that acknowledgement and by out flat out saying Thanksgiving is not racist, I think a better way it's to not. say I think you could say these things did happen and this is what it's based on and Thanksgiving has evolved into become well, something else. But that doesn't mean I'm going to erase the opinions of Native Americans who suffered. Well, who erased opinions of Native Americans who suffered? That's not what I'm doing. By saying Thanksgiving isn't inherently racist, you are erasing that. So in other words, unless I say that Thanksgiving is inherently racist, I am erasing the opinion of all Native Americans. Yeah, I mean, not all, but those who feel that Thanksgiving is racist. Well, just because and they, they were the, feel that, I'm not they were the marginalized group, you know, and we're pushing this well, narrative that they were happy to have. Like, at Thanksgiving, they were, and for fifty years, they were. Okay. So, wasn't that a good thing? I've heard that that dinner didn't happen. It did happen. Okay. Not only, did, and I, I've also heard this. You know, people try to go to uh, the Winthrop Diaries uh, later, and I believe it was in the 1630s where they had Thanksgivings during times of war against the Pequots. Uh, but that wasn't all the same thing. That was they were thankful for during battle that they had fewer casualties. And so I think that's probably what you're conflating. They teach that often in school. I know it's kind of interesting that you say we don't teach any of this. When I went to college, when I went to high school, I was only taught about colonialism and how awful the settlers were. I never taught. I was never taught, for example, of all the warring between the tribes, of the cannibalism of the scalping that they were doing. I was taught that they were peaceful people and these settlers came in and stole their land when the reality was they were warring, they were barbaric. We had many years of peace. We came in, we purchased land, we traded. We had a healthy trading relationship for a while. And they then were it barbaric? Did they lived here. This was their land. Yeah, they were certainly barbarians. You could argue that the colonialists were barbarians for coming in and taking their land. I certainly would say that colonialists were barbaric compared to us today. And I would certainly say that Native Americans uh, were barbaric in their practices compared to the colonialists. Well, just because you don't agree and understand with something doesn't make it barbaric. Well, I just mean, you know, the fact that they didn't have plumbing or use the wheel. They didn't have plumbing? No, they didn't have plumbing. The Romans That did. doesn't make them inferior to no, other people. No, it just people. means it's barbaric. Okay. When I'm talking about barbaric, I'm talking about less evolved technologically and societally. Okay, so definition rather than the connotation. Yes, definition rather than the connotation. connotation. So you yes. seem to be someone who ignores connotations. No, I don't. Because Thanksgiving has a negative connotation in some people's eyes, but you're ignoring that connotation. So does Christmas. Yeah, so does Christmas. But you I, don't talk about that either? I do talk about Christmas. I love Christmas. I think it's wonderful and should be celebrated. I know that you've made it clear that you disagree. You don't like Christmas, you don't like Ramadan, you don't like Easter, you don't like Thanksgiving. I believe that there are certain moments throughout American history, I let the 4th of July, independence, that can be celebrated regardless of imperfections throughout history. And I think that's important to note. And I think that it's a good thing to honor and show that there can be a moment in time of peace because we had it for 50 years, regardless of the wars that happened before we came here. Does, but do centuries are, outweigh 50 years? Do you think Native Americans are thankful for being put on reservations, like centuries after Thanksgiving? Do you mean Thanksgiving? being given reservations after being. they lost wars? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So you don't like any of the holidays, okay? And you say that I'm completely ignoring someone's opinion if I don't agree with them. No, that's not what I said. I said that you're ignoring the opinion of marginalized people who the holiday affects, who the glorification of the holiday negatively affects because it erases what they say happened to them. And they were here first, so sure. they should have a say in what the narrative is about. Yeah, I'm no one saying they can't have a say. I don't believe it's a racist holiday. But that's by not, erasing someone's experience, by, I mean, erasing someone's experience is a form of racism. 
erasing someone's experience and reframing it in But I didn't erase anybody's colonial. experience. But by, by saying it isn't racist, you are erasing someone's experience. No. Yes, you are. Inherently. Incorrect. Why? That's not the definition of racism. What's the definition of racism? Definition of racism is believing that somebody is inferior solely based on their race. That's prejudice. Racism is institutionalized no. discrimination. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Well, I'm not an institution, so right now we're going with the individualized definition of and racism. And you're ignoring the institutionalized racism. And you just accuse me racism. individually of being racist. You are by so let me, let me ask you this. Maybe we can find some common ground here. Because you said you love Thanksgiving, uh, but you don't like the holidays. What should we do then? Right? Contact is made between two civilizations, for example. This happens, right? One has rifles and one has wheels and, 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 and horses and they engage in peace. And then there are land disputes when land was purchased. So let's just get rid of what we have right now. What would you do? You would have no Thanksgiving? What would we do? What should the United States be? I'm genuinely curious. I think just an acknowledgement, like everyone should acknowledge what happened. Yes, I believe everyone does. I don't think so. I have. Okay. So, I, so is it okay to acknowledge that there were uh, acts of, of horrible evil and violence across all sides and still celebrate Thanksgiving for what it is? Is that okay? That's a good question. I haven't thought that far. Do you think that it is better to celebrate Thanksgiving and recognize a moment of unity and encourage it both with the early settlers, uh, the early pilgrims and the Native Americans, as well as after the Civil War? Do you think it's more productive to have a day to celebrate that and encourage that kind of unity and bridging that cultural divide? Or do you think it's less productive? I think it's performative. So if something like is- Like virtue signaling? Yeah. So okay. if something's performative, then does it really do the good that you're describing? What good am I describing? The unity, the unity that you're describing. Like, if I, something I is performative, then is that unity really there, or is it a performative unity which doesn't actually? Well, I think. I mean, you just talked about Thanksgiving cooking and spending time with family. I mean, that's that's unity right there, right? That's prioritizing giving thanks. I mean, I think that Thanksgiving honestly is the least exclusive holiday. Christian, you know, Chris, Christmas, For Christianity Christian. would exclude people Why, of other religions. Why? Because it's secular. Ramadan would exclude people of other religions. You know, um, you can take your pick from any of the religious holidays. Thanksgiving is be thankful for what it is that you do have, whether you're a Christian, whether you're well, a Buddhist, you whether you're Muslim. Well, are you and your family going to talk about what happened to the Native Americans? I mean, we've talked about it all all, all throughout my life, and I learned about it. Are in you going to talk about? Are you going to acknowledge it at the dinner table? I don't know. Do you I should. have to? You should. Okay. Right? No? Why not? I didn't say I wouldn't. You should. Okay. Well, thank you for telling me what I should and should not do You're in my welcome. personal time. You're welcome. And you wouldn't think that that, is, uh, that at all in any way is overstepping bounds or being pushy? No. no. Okay. I don't. All right, well, maybe you should discuss with uh, your family the, uh, the history that you learned that wasn't accurate that you brought here to the table. And maybe you can all get an accurate account of what happened historically. And uh, maybe discuss as well the acts of barbarism that still go on since you're Muslim across the Islamic world. Do you do that at Ramadan? Yeah, I do actually. You do? Yeah, I do. So what do you discuss at Ramadan? Um, I discuss Indentured how... servitude. I like to discuss how I think that Islam itself isn't in certain Middle Eastern countries, how it's unequal for women. Sure. And as a woman, and as a Muslim woman who was raised Muslim, I believe that that's an equal, and I will acknowledge that. I like to acknowledge how their Saudi Arabia, for example, is um, guilty of hypocrisy. You know, the royal family has so much money. I know you're talking a lot lower right now. Yeah, I am. Is it because you're concerned about criticizing Islam? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe huh. that's just ingrained in me. Well, that's, that's peculiar. Yeah, it is. Nice talking to you. Well, I appreciate it. And I appreciate your, your intellectual honesty there and, uh, and that you have those discussions. I don't, by the way, I don't think you need to do that at Ramadan. I think that enjoying Ramadan for the holiday that it is and celebrating it with your family is a wonderful thing, regardless of, listen, it, it, Muslims are imperfect. Christians are imperfect. Uh, Native Americans are certainly imperfect. Uh, if you go back to old colonial England, and Church of England are certainly imperfect. But, um, the Irish are certainly imperfect, but I, it's not my business I to tell them what they need to discuss on St. Patrick's Day. just when I saw that video and when I've talked to Native American people mm -hmm. and just heard about what happened, I just have empathy for what they say. Sure. And it just makes it difficult to not st speak up for them. I have empathy. Here's the thing. I, I Do you hope know what I, I mean? Like it's I have hard empathy for as well, but I also, you can also have empathy and understand that what people are saying is inaccurate. For example, I have a relative who's bipolar, okay? I'm not saying Native Americans are bipolar. This is an example. I hope you understand this, right? Uh, I have an, a relative who's bipolar, 
and he will describe situations or scenarios that are not real. And you have empathy for him. And I have empathy for him, but it's not necessarily accurate. And so I love him, and I care about him, and I let him know that I love him and I, I care about him, but I, I don't engage on the plane, on the wavelength, that what you're saying is accurate. I don't and think I can you have can empathy. compare a severe mental illness to uh, the way people feel about We're not supposed to use the term injustice. mental illness anymore. Yes, you are. Depending on what it is, depending on how it's defined by the DSM-5. I'm, ment I'm mentally ill and I use that term. I'm definitely mentally ill. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, again, I'm not. I was saying I'm not comparing bipolar to Native American. I was saying that I can one can have empathy without necessarily agreeing with the premise as far as its accuracy. So I can have empathy for Native Americans saying, "Hey, Thanksgiving to me represents all of these wars that occurred and these battles and genocide." And I can say, "Hey, you know, I understand how you feel, but that's not what Thanksgiving is celebrating." And I can say, I understand how you feel, but there also wasn't mass genocide committed, if you actually look at it There was mass genocide committed. By definition, it wasn't genocide. There were wars, and one side won. One-sided war, mind you. But, you know, there was that, that, by that definition, there was genocide with the, the Mohawks and the Mohicans, the Algonquins and the Iroquois. I mean, they would cannibalize people in front of their family, right? If, if one of them had advanced technology, in other words, one of them were as advanced as the early settlers, this would all be Mohawk country. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't a peaceful culture. Everyone, right, this is human nature. And I think that taking a holiday and removing the grace, removing the beauty of this holiday, which is meant to symbolize unity and giving thanks, to simply re-inject what is human nature, acts of evil that occurred not during this holiday, but somewhere in a timeline, I don't think helps uh, promote healing. I think, if anything, it's, it's, it's divisive. So we can agree that the idea, do we agree that the idea of Thanksgiving in your head has shifted into something else, not a celebration of, or not an erasure, of racism, but a celebration of unity. Yes, is that what you think? Thanksgiving is a celebration of unity, and it, and it always has. But why it's can't a celebration it be? Of giving why thanks. can't it be a celebration of unity and like an acknowledgement of the erasure? You can do that. Yeah, that's that's you what I'm that. arguing. Yeah, I just think that if people are going to do that, it also needs to be accurate. So if people are going to teach, for example, in and I think we would both agree, right, on college campus, you guys are certainly not taught that. Oh, the settlers were great and it was peaceful. That's certainly not what's being taught on campus. I have to go to class. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. What Seems was your name like again? Safa. Seems Safa. like no one can change your mind, so. I appreciate it, Safa. Well, I thought Surprise. that was a good conversation, no? Now, before we continue, remember that these types of videos can only continue with your support uh, by joining Mug Club. Join up at louderwithcredit.com slash mug club for tons of more exclusive content, including a daily show that you don't get available on YouTube, and to ensure that videos like this will always continue to exist on YouTube itself. All right, let's get back to it. Next up, Matthew. What's your name? Good. Matthew, nice to meet you. Matthew, nice to yeah. meet you. Steven. So uh, I kind of just mentioned it to the crowd, but again, mm -hmm. just so we kind of uh, clarify any mis miscommunications, talking about Thanksgiving today. Right. And. Um, I, I don't think it's a racist holiday at all. I'm a fan of Thanksgiving. I celebrate it. I think it has done me good and will do me good. I say God bless it. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving to you. You are more than welcome to change my mind. We can have a discussion about this. Right. But first, what are you most thankful for? Um, I'd say I'm most thankful for uh, being here at UT. Great school. Awesome students. You know, hook them. Notice your family if they're watching. You're, they're not on the yeah. top of the list. Oh, no, yeah. Of gratitude. Them too. <laughs> them too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good for you, Mom. Um, yeah. So, what? Um, what do you disagree with? You're welcome to change um, your mind. Well, I mean, I agree. Like you were saying that you think it's the least racist holiday around. There, I think there are some aspects of that that I agree with. Um, okay. Like the idea of, uh, you know, an Indi Indian uh, tribe coming together with these pilgrims, you know. Uh, Native breaking, American. Native Americans, I'm sorry. Um, Jeez. Yes. Uh, Want to get us banned? That kind of dialogue? Uh, coming together at a time of need, breaking bread is like, that's one of the most like, um, recognizable American things in, the, in our past, right? It's uh, sure. it's not racist at all. But the idea of what comes after that, um, I mean, I'm sure you heard this before. The, the mass genocide of these Native Americans by the very same pilgrims are like that's an undeniable fact of mm -hmm. American history that we cannot ignore. And uh, to ignore that and pretend that it did not happen and to not acknowledge it today would I. I think would be uh, inherently racist. And that's not to say that I think we should stop celebrating Thanksgiving, but I think we should acknowledge that and maybe um, incorporate more of a day of mourning into that celebration as well. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I guess somebody is booing there. Um, so isn't this, this is uh, remarkable. You and I can sit down and disagree and have a discussion, mm -hmm. but some people just choose to boo. Yeah. Good old Austin. Uh, well, listen, first off, I want to be really clear. Mm -hmm. I am not denying that there were atrocities committed on across the board. Mass genocide? No. I'll disagree with that. We can get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change what Thanksgiving is first. And so what a lot of people do is they try and take uh, 
actions afterward, acts of evil committed afterward to discredit the idea of Thanksgiving. And you see that, that's a national movement right now. You see it with Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day. Well, if we do that, that sets a precedent, we could do it for any holiday. We could do it for Christmas, we could do it for Veterans Day, we could do it for Memorial Day, we could do it for Labor Day, we could do it for Ramadan. Um, but we choose what we celebrate, right. right? And we choose to celebrate a very specific instance in 1621 where the pilgrims uh, peacefully broke bread and feasted with Native Americans. And that peace lasted for 50 years. Right. So um, it sounds to me like we're in agreement with that then, that Thanksgiving right. is, a, is a good holiday. As we see today, I do think it is a good holiday, but I believe there are um, some changes that could and maybe should be made. Okay, and you believe those, and we'll get to that in a second, right. but you believe those changes should be based on the idea of mass genocide that you said came from those very same pilgrims well, very not, unlikely not, not because 50 years pilgrim, but like um uh, some of those same but like um also a lot of other colonists as well yeah. coming from colonists yeah. um so you believe mass genocide was committed um i do believe a not entire uh wiping out of the native americans of course but that that tribe um and a major genocide yes w which tribe the wampanoag tribe I yeah, the, is it wampanoag or wampanoag Wampanoag. Wampanoag. I'm, yeah, I no, you yeah. could be right and I could no, be wrong. No, no, I'm um, Yeah, because terrible. I know that we're taught in school, mm -hmm. right, mass right. genocide. Since like the first grade, really. Right, yeah. and it's not true. There was no genocide committed. Really? Yeah, there wasn't genocide committed. There were wars fought. So um, there was actually uh, an article, I think, in the um, University of Massachusetts that was written. They finally, it's the closest estimate that I've found. So, you know, the estimate of how many Native Americans were wiped out is about 50%. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. Uh, but do you know how many of the settlers were wiped out? About 30%. Mm -hmm. So that's not really indicative of a genocide. That's indicative of wars that were fought um, and, and, and one side won. And granted, it was a pretty one-sided battle with one side swinging the hammer, right. and that was the guys with the white beards and the, the funny hats, right, and funny mm -hmm. uniforms. Um, but that being said, you know, the Native Americans did try to commit genocide against other tribes. They tried to wipe other tribes off the face of North America. Um, and so I think that if we're going to single out colonialists and settlers for what happened, I think we need to do it accurately. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mass genocide. There were wars fought and they were much more effective. We also need to recognize that it was happening on arguably a much more barbaric level before the settlers came here. And I don't think that's taught in school. Right. I mean, um, I, I would just argue that um, a lot of the Native Americans were defending themselves, uh, like on their land, the land that was theirs first, and then the colonists came. And yes, they broke. They uh, a lot of them were peaceful and tried to like break bread, as as we now know. But yeah, they were a lot of the a lot of the times initiating the conflict. And that's not all. That's not true all the time. I, I know, but yeah, and and, and, and the, the peace was broken because they killed a, a, an English translator, missionary mm -hmm. too. Which granted, that's a miscommunication. Doesn't mean that you start a whole war. But I'm talking about Native Americans within Native Americans. Mm -hmm. This idea that it was a peaceful horseback culture, right. it's just not true. I mean, I'm sure. You, uh, well, actually, maybe. Do you know that they hadn't domesticated horses? I did not know that. They didn't use horses. That's mm -hmm. a big reason they got yeah. you know, a lot of the diseases. They came in contact with animals that they'd never domesticated before. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this idea that we deliberately transmitted smallpox blankets centuries before germ theory. And the truth mm -hmm. is, they had never been on a horse, right? right. And so you develop immunity. So um, it wasn't a horseback culture. They didn't use the wheel. It wasn't a peaceful culture. They would cannibalize people. Sometimes do it before they killed the rest of the family so the family could know that their, their patriarch had been cannibalized, you know? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about this country and sort of, I know, I don't think you're suggesting that we were, we should give the land back to oh, Native no. Americans. No, it's, I mean. Because then you couldn't pick who. Do you give it to the yeah, Mohicans, to the Mohawks? Yeah, that's a whole different right. ball game. Like you, but, but, I'm, I, but I'm not denying the atrocities that were committed. Right. I just find it uh, unproductive. And I think that this is, kind of a through line, particularly on campus, to teach kids when we talk about Thanksgiving, to say, or Columbus Day, yeah, but actually they were a bunch of mass genocidist settlers, when that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. There was human nature at play, evil on all sides, and um, the colonialists, you know, what became the United States of America, are singularly unique for ending that barbarism in record time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. I just think that, um, you know, Celebrating it today, it's a totally different uh, meaning. You know, it's just a day to come. You know, a lot of Native Americans, like, they aren't even like mentioned in the conversation sometimes when it comes to Thanksgiving by a lot of people today. It's just like a day of coming together with family, a day of just breaking bread, and that's great. I think that's awesome. I love Thanksgiving. I'm just saying that, um, really, that can be applied to any holiday, like you said, and I, or I think you said that. I'm, I, yes. I'm not sure. Well, I, I say discrediting a holiday that we choose to celebrate because mm -hmm. of evil to proceed it mm -hmm. could be used with any holiday. Right. And, and right. I, I think that we try to do that a lot with Thanksgiving because it tries to lay all of the guilt at the feet of 
white European settlers, mm -hmm. and I think it's an inaccurate depiction. Whereas Thanksgiving is a very specific instance that we celebrate because it was a moment of the old world and new world uh, breaking bread peacefully. And mm -hmm. I think that that's not really taught very much. It gets lost in the shuffle because the way I look at it is, hey, we did it once, we did it for 50 years, we should be able to do that again. Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially considering the negativity out there. Yeah, yeah, and, and I would have to say though, like, and this is this could be controversial in a lot by itself, no, but like, if I were to make like some sort of like um, comparison, right? It'd be like, I've, I've heard people make the argument that what if, uh, you know, the Jewish people of Europe in in um, you know, the 1930s, 1940s, came together with like the Nazi party, and this was before like anything happened, right? And they, they had a great moment of peace and like yeah. uh, broke bread and had a like, great conversation. Uh, a lot of like dictators, like where Adolf Hitler came together with like a lot of Jewish people and just like said like, hey, like we're bros and everything. And then the Holocaust happens like a couple months later, like sure. would you still celebrate that day that they came together and they broke bread if they made a holiday of that? You know, after the fact. Well, yeah, I don't think it's an apt comparison. And the reason why is because it's not mass genocide. Again, when you have 30% of the settlers uh, who were wiped out. Um, I mean, how many Gestapo, how many SS were taken out by Jews? Not 30%, yeah, no. none, none. No. They were taken out by, thank God, the settlers, the Americans, right. the New World, right? We mm -hmm. came out and, and Native Americans would have never been able to do that because they didn't use the wheel. Right. So um, I think, uh, <laughs> let alone planes. Right. Um, I mean, that's an example too, like right now, let's say, Let's say the early, the settlers had never come, right? right? And by the way, the idea of mass genocide, for example, like, I don't know if you know this, but Manhattan was purchased, the island of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So we purchased it for what they call 60 guilders worth, which I know sounds like an RPG game, but that was basically a ship full of like close to 10,000 pelts and timber and nutwood. And it was a Lenape, and I believe the Canarsie, there's some dispute, but they lived in what we now know as modern Brooklyn, okay? So they sold it, it was purchased, and the colonists said, okay, we want to we now live in Manhattan. Well, they didn't keep any records, and they didn't really understand the concept of personal property. So if they come back and say, well, we thought it was a lease. It's like, well, hold on a second. We gave you a ship full of thousands of pelts and wood because this is our land now. And then what we're taught in class often is they kicked people out of Manhattan. No, what happened was they believed they were purchasing Manhattan. These tribes didn't understand personal property the same way. So granted, there's a miscommunication. But after that, when the settlers had set up camp with their families and created the island of Manhattan, they said, no, you can't come back here and just take the land back. And then a war starts. I don't see that as genocide. That's right. different from Adolf Hitler saying, we need to rid the country of Jews. That never actually happened here in the United States. We never sought to completely rid the country of Native Americans. You don't think so? No, we didn't. That's why you have more people who have a percentage of Native American than, than ever before. Like Johnny Depp is 1 16th Cherokee, or Elizabeth Warren, right? She's 1 1024th Charity, uh, Cherokee. I guess she probably regrets that 23 in me now because mm -hmm. she just proved that she's the whitest person in America. Um, <laughs> I have more Sub Saharan African in me than she has Cherokee in her. But uh, there was a lot of intermarrying. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of intermarrying. Right. The idea first was to have them assimilate, to become one culture. And uh, if not, then there were wars that occurred. And by the way, the wars weren't just us versus the, versus the natives. Mm -hmm. The wars, were, we didn't have enough people. Right. The wars were natives versus the natives who sided with the guys who had guns and horses. Right. I mean, we talked, just recently, we talked to the gentleman who was uh, talking about um, South America. I think he brought up Cortez. Mm -hmm. There were only a few hundred conquistadors. And many, 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 many thousands, right, of Mayans and Aztecs. What happened? Other tribes were enslaved and they said, I'm gonna take my chances with the guys with the red beards and shiny hats because I'm tired of being cannibalized, enslaved, and scalped. So this idea that it was mass genocide, that we tried to purge the country of Native Americans, and that it was a peaceful horseback culture that lived in harmony before us, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Doesn't mean that there weren't acts of evil committed from some of the settlers. Right. But I do think, and I would, I would ask you this, do you think though, because it seems like some of this information is, is, is new to you, and I will tell you this, it was new to me when I was an adult because I was raised in Canada, I kind of had to educate myself. Right. But in school, they do disproportionately uh, paint the acts of evil or weigh the acts of evil on the scale of the, of the colonists and not right. really acknowledge the barbarism and brutality and violence from the natives that went on for far longer. And I do think they do teach us about that aspect later, like maybe like in high school, like definitely in college, right? Like right. the acts of, uh, the acts of uh, uh, brutality that the Native Americans did, like you were saying, the scalping, the cannibalism, it, it's just, um, I think in, especially in elementary school, they are trying to tell us, you know, that they, the colonists came and just kind of invaded these lands, which isn't true per se, right. but, um, 
I do think they are the ones that initiated the conflict most of the time, and they are the ones that came to this land to try to take that land. And that's, I think that's a fact. I don't, I don't know if uh, there's any disputes there, but um, like there is a racist, like I, I still think there is a racist um, intention there. Not necessarily because of like the color of their skin in, in a sense, but they did come to like take these lands. And that breaking of bread on that day was important, but I think we should just also recognize that. And whether that includes like not getting rid of Thanksgiving, that's ridiculous, right? Right. Um, but maybe. But you know, it's proposed by people. Oh, yeah. And sending like Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. Right, which like, I think maybe that grants a little bit more merit, but that's a topic for like another time. Um, and I, I just mean, how think, do you celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day? They were just here for a long time, and then someone discovered it. It wasn't right. Indigenous. We're celebrating. We're choosing to celebrate a day where right. a new world was discovered. Doesn't mean that everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. So my point is, once you have the sliding scale of since everything's not perfect, we have to throw the baby out with the bathwater and do it with a holiday. Mm -hmm. Is is not only something that I, I don't agree with, but I think there's a far more sinister undertone in that there is this proactive goal that I've seen on campus and from a lot of professors to paint. Uh, Western European colonialists as far more evil or ill-intentioned than they were mm -hmm. and to gloss over the good that they did. All right. Um, yeah. And I think they did a lot more good than the Native Americans ever did. I really do believe that. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. and I, I noticed your eyes go like, wait, what? Right? <laughs> I saw that reaction. So before, uh, you know, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, right? Yeah, right. First Thanksgiving, 1621. Right. So uh, let's just start with Thanksgiving, right? 1621 mm -hmm. because it's kind of the first main interactions. Right. Okay. So before 1621, how long, and I know this, there were many Native American tribes, and they were warring with each other for a long time, but how long were they here before 1621? Thousands of years. Yeah. Let's just agree, let's just put a general thousands of years. We yeah, both yeah. agree on that, right? Right. Okay, thousands of years. Okay, they were still enslaving, scalping, brutally beating, killing women, burning people alive, right? They mm -hmm. were still doing that when the colonists got here. Okay, so 1621. From that point, how long did it take for us to actually just outlaw the practice of slavery. From from which point? From, from 1621. Uh, roughly 200 years? Yeah. yeah. So thousands of years, no progress, mm -hmm. 200 years, singularly unique, in not only ending scalping and burning alive and, and cannibalism, which they didn't engage in, but actually ending slavery. Which, right. by the way, still goes on across the world. Right. Still goes on not only in the Middle East, right. but it also goes on in a lot of tribes that are mostly untouched by the New World. Mm -hmm. So I would say that is, if we're going to teach it, we need to teach that there was a war, one side won. Sure, they came and they conquered this land, and you can say that they stole it. But you can even ignore all of the property rights and the treaties that were signed and just say they stole the land. That being said, they did far more pro as far as uh, progressing toward human rights for everybody than the Native Americans ever had. And that's an irony that I think is lost in a lot of progressive students. That is true. That is true. So I guess, like, my question to you would be, so do you, would you be in favor of creating a day of mourning, or would you just say, like, they don't deserve it at this point? I think that every every single history class that's taught on campus is effectively a class of mourning. It's a curriculum of mourning. I think that if right now, if I were to go, in, and you can disagree with me and tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think if I were to go into any history class that teaches about the early settlers here on UT campus, I would wager that 80% of them would teach uh, the story of the colonialists as evil, as conniving, as trickery, and that they committed mass genocide. I think that's why you came in and used the word mass genocide. I think you're somewhat parroting from what you've learned from your professors. Um, and uh, so I don't think... I don't, I well, don't I mean, think I, I would agree with you there. That is, yeah. that is the term. They do use mass genocide. Right. And um, I, like, I do not think it was a mass genocide. Um, I do think there are aspects of it that were, though. But um, I do see your point. I think massive numbers of people died. Right. Right. But it, sometimes it went both ways. For example, when, when uh, the, the, the colonialists were caught by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about Wounded Knee, they don't tell you that only 38 Euro, uh, European settlers were killed because the number was disproportionate. Well, one side had guns and horses. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what's going to happen if there's a gang war here at UT and one side has cars and AR-15s and the other side has bow and arrows and they have to get on your bird scooters? I mean, it's yeah. not mass genocide. It's kind of like what's happening in Hong Kong right now with the protesters. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, not exactly the same because it's not really mass genocide, but right, it is right. true that the people are being oppressed by... And using bows, has... bows and arrows. I don't know if you've heard about that. I, well, I, you know, have those been confirmed? I think so. I think okay. I've seen footage. I haven't, I haven't seen that footage it's yet, but I do know it is a disproportion, disproportionate level of power from the government to right. these protesters. Um, anyway, that's a whole different discussion, right. which we can get into. I, my thoughts and prayers are with those people in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, unlike uh, the NBA. Apparently, they got to keep keep those dollars coming in from China. Uh, but my point is, there's plenty of mourning because that's what's taught to young people. Mm -hmm. I think that is what's primarily taught, and I think 
the, w the, the scales have gone too far the other way, where when we want to celebrate Thanksgiving, there are far more people saying, well, actually, that's problematic, than there are saying, hey, let's take a moment to give thanks. I don't really think we need to put any more on that side of the scale. What I'm doing here is trying to re-tip the scale to say, no, 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 the United States is a great country. Um, I'm really glad that the United States exists. I'm really glad that they did discover the new world, and I'm going to give thanks on this day, um, regardless of what my professor tells me. Right. So. Hopefully, well, I hope that was productive. Yeah, think, yeah, no, it totally man, was. I really appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate your candor, too, in talking about it. It helps me to learn, too, what you guys are talking about in classrooms and stuff, because yeah. I suspect as much because of when I went to college, but, yeah, it's it's, uh, yeah, and it's it very one-sided. It just helps uh, have a conversation without uh, protesting. Yes. Well, there was someone who started there, and I think yeah, she... Yeah, unfortunately. I think she, uh, she, she shut him out. Yeah, but I, I will just have to say, uh, Jeff Epstein didn't kill himself. Huh? That's it. <laughs> Meredith. Meredith. Nice. Steven Crowder, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with what we do with these Change My Mind segments, but uh, the idea is that we sit down and, and rationalize our positions on um, controversial topics. It's not meant to be a debate. Uh, today, I, I, I know this is a sensitive topic for a lot of people, Thanksgiving, particularly as the way, uh, the way it's taught on campus. I do not believe that Thanksgiving is a racist holiday. Uh, I think it's probably the most inclusive national holiday that we celebrate. I think it has done me good, will do me good. I say God bless it. Um, and if you disagree, you're more than welcome to change my mind. Happy Thanksgiving to you. What are you most thankful for right now? I'm most thankful for my family. That's a nice one. You have a good family? Um, yeah, my mom and dad. I wouldn't be who I am without them. Oh, that's very nice. A lot of people were thankful to be going to UT, but you're the first one to say they were thankful for your family. I wouldn't be going to UT without my family. They're the root of everything I do. Wonderful. So, um, you're more than welcome to take this opportunity to change my mind. Okay, here's what I think. I think that when you get down to the semantics of the platform, you know, Thanksgiving isn't racist, change my mind. I think, like, from the jump, the lines get blurred. Okay. Because the denotation of the word racist is to have prejudiced or discriminatory attitudes towards other races. Sure. Okay, and so I think that when we look at the semantics and the denotation, that no, Thanksgiving is not racist. I agree with you. Okay. However, I do think that its history is immovably rooted in some colonialist and oppressive events. I think that that's inarguable. Also. I mean, I think that... Thanksgiving. Whites, yeah, Thanksgiving. I mean, I think that, they, yes, Thanksgiving specifically. I think that, you know, and of course the history is pretty blurry and every single textbook seems to teach a little differently, <laughs> but white settlers came over here and they displaced parts of native, native. One, one second, did you say every textbook will teach it differently? I mean, a lot of textbooks do teach oh, well, it differently. that's a problem. They shouldn't because it's very clear. I was clear. gonna say, it is a problem. Yeah. I just think that... 1621, the uh, pilgrims of the uh, Wampanoags, Wampanoags, I always get the pronunciation wrong. Because I was raised in Canada where it's Iroquois and the Algonquins. I'm not as familiar with the American tribes. But uh, no, it's very specific. 1621 when they had a feast. My the point tribes. is, peace for 50 years. whenever you frame, like, like you said, this is a very sensitive issue for some people. Sure. And I think on some levels an important issue. Not a lot of, it doesn't cross everybody's minds. Honestly, I never stopped to think, is Thanksgiving racist verbatim like that until I saw your poster walking to my table over there. Okay. My issue is that whenever you frame something like this as Thanksgiving is racist, you oversimplify it. But I'm saying make, it's not racist. Yeah, you're saying it's not racist. And it's a response to people saying that it's a racist holiday, it's including some racist. professors here. It's not racist. Okay, However, good. I do think that, like, do you acknowledge that some of the history behind the Thanksgiving holiday is rooted in oppressive or colonialist histories? Not Thanksgiving, no. So that's why I think it's important when you say different textbooks teach different versions. What is history. what is your understanding of why we celebrate Thanksgiving? My understanding of why we celebrate Thanksgiving is that, okay, technically the first Thanksgiving is argued to have been the pilgrims, they were here, they had a successful harvest, and they invited some of the native tribes to come with them to celebrate their good harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my understanding of it. However, Thanksgiving wasn't technically made a national holiday in the United States until 1863, right. which Abraham was Lincoln. 150 years later. Sure. So it's very blurry when the first Thanksgiving was, especially considering the native tribes, both in Europe and here in the United States, had 
feast to celebrate harvest for hundreds of years. So yeah. it's well, know, it's, 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 it's not, it's not, blurry. it's not blurry. Let me tell you why. I it's, think it's blurry. Okay, but it's not blurry historically. We actually have, and this is something that you'll read a lot online. We actually have uh, multiple corroborating historical documents regarding the feast of 1621, including the names of attendees. And the reason that then, you know, then you had uh, George Washington who wanted to make it a holiday in October. Jefferson didn't recognize it. The reason Abraham Lincoln recognized, as he said, in 1863, an official holiday was after the Emancipation Proclamation, after some big battles in the Civil War. He said, we need a national holiday to unify the country right now, for there to be some healing. What example could we point to in history, very specifically, a very specific example where this has happened? Oh, let's go to that perfect example, the convergence of the old world and the new world in 1621 with those early settlers in the Wampanoag, sorry, I might get that wrong, uh, tribes with peace that lasted for 50 years. For 50 years. So the reason it's a celebration, the reason it was reckoned, by the way, the United States wasn't, a, wasn't an actual country, so you have a lot of holidays that weren't federally recognized until later. But it was federally recognized later for that specific date in 1621. There is no dispute about that. Now, if you have a problem with other examples of colonial settling, and I think these are legitimate grievances, fine. But as far as Thanksgiving, the holiday and why we celebrate it, no, I don't think there's any, any uh, deeply rooted racially motivated history or negativity. I don't. I still think that the framing of the issue is poor on your part. Okay. And I think that stems back to a lot of what you do here and you conversing with all of these college students who ultimately, on average, aren't as well informed as you are. Sometimes. I've, like I, as a college student who had to do a whole lot of Googling before I came over here to talk to you, vetting the sources from which I was reading from on Google, I just, but should it, shouldn't you all know that here if you're going to one of the best universities in the country? You know we should, but we don't. And I think it's super easy for you to capitalize on that because you know more than we do and your point is straight up, Thanksgiving is not racist. And it's really easy for you to make that point. And the first thing I said when I I'm sat down to make it, by is the way, to with agree professors. With we don't have any professors willing to debate. If you know professors no, you here would be willing to, we would be more than happy. I'd be Honestly, more than happy. no, I don't. But that's, so, you, so you acknowledge that's a challenge as well. So I, mean, if the I acknowledge it's a challenge. Can I just say one thing? If the professors won't engage in discussion, um, and they're not teaching you this, the fact that you have to, this is basic information that everyone should know about American history, Thanksgiving. That's not really a gotcha. That's a, actually a disservice from your college professors and your high school teachers to have not taught you the actual history of Thanksgiving. But we not agree on that? I suppose we could, yes. Okay. Because my goal is not to be rude or to upset you, and oh, I would no, like to hear what your point of view is. Uh, but no, I would disagree with you. You can still. I disagree with you that there is anything as far as uh, racially, super, you know, supremacist, or uh, as far as violent colonialism with Thanksgiving, the holiday, why we celebrate it. I don't deny that there were acts of evil committed on all sides afterwards. But no, Thanksgiving, I have no problem with it. Okay, and I will articulate that it's fair. But I will also articulate that I still think there's a lack of accountability and acknowledgement. And I say accountability, but that's only because I can't think of a better word. At the end of the day, the Pilgrims were acknowledged as the first successful settlers. Like, because, you know, there were a couple examples here and there of people coming here and trying to establish something. Right. But the Pilgrims are the most famous successful example of European settlers coming to the eastern seaboard of the continental United States. Sure. And like I said, being successful in establishing a community. And I think that that was the first domino. Okay. I really do believe that was the first domino. But Thanksgiving was a domino. Not necessarily Thanksgiving was a domino, but the pilgrims coming here was a domino. Okay. If you read about the history and all the subsequent years after Thanksgiving, native peoples were killed by plagues and eventually displaced by the spread of colonies. They were actually and killed by plagues even before Thanksgiving because some of the French settlers left and since they hadn't domesticated animals, they would come in contact with diseases. Like the idea that smallpox blankets, that's, I mean, that's a myth. That we, didn't under, we didn't have germ theory, but they did come into contact, for example, horses. Did you know that they hadn't domesticated horses? I did know and that they, actually. Horses were yeah, brought Yeah, weren't domesticated. Here. Yeah. yeah, and so they, so actually, I think we came to an abandoned village at the time of Thanksgiving because they had already been wiped out due to some diseases. But I would like to hear about the dominoes. So thanks, the 50 years after Thanksgiving, because that's when warring started, the dominoes, and, and what do you I think about that? I think it's a domino effect, and I think that even if we acknowledge that Thanksgiving isn't racist, and that the people who first celebrated, people who celebrated the first Thanksgiving, as we call it, you know, the first 
established ritualistic feast to thank God or the gods, whatever they believed, mm -hmm. for their good harvest. I think that those people were the first truly successful settlers and that they established a trend and that from that point forward, sub subjugation and colonialism rooted in bigoted ideas and oppression, I think that that's where it started. Okay, and so I now think we're getting we into colonialism. You know, let's have that discussion because I've tried to focus on Thanksgiving, but I think that you've actually been very reasonable and we've both agreed that Thanksgiving itself is not a problem, but it seems like you have a problem with the settlers afterward in colonialism, because I might disagree with you on that. So uh, let's do that. Let's talk I about that. I don't think Thanksgiving, no, Thanksgiving is not a problem. What is a problem, however, is if we try to argue that we shouldn't acknowledge that there is bad history around the first Thanksgiving. Later, afterward, yeah, over 50 years later. And I don't, but then I think we might disagree as to what history is bad or what the motivations were. So I actually think I'm still very grateful that they did settle here and that the United States was colonized so that we can sit here and have open, free and open discussions. So I would love to hear your opinion on, on sort of colonization and what maybe would have been the right thing to do as opposed to what happened. I don't think there was a right way to do it. Mm. I honestly don't. And I think that the way people thought back then wasn't suited to the right, sorry, oh, the okay. right way to have done things. Um, I wish that I could say, oh, well, they could have done it this way and less people could have died and less conflicts could have happened sure. and less native peoples could have been oppressed or subjugated or displaced. I wish that I could have some hypothesis. However, I don't think I have to have a hypothesis for a better way to say that the way it was done wasn't good enough or wasn't right. I do agree that there are certainly some acts of evil committed on both sides. And in celebrating Thanksgiving, that's not um, the lack of recognizing that there were some acts of evil committed on both sides. For example, Native Americans have their own holidays that they celebrate, and they were far more barbaric and brutal toward each other than even the, uh, the colonizers were. I mean, you can go back to what, the Mohicans versus the Mohawks, the Algonquins and the Iroquois. You go down south and you, know, you talk about the conquistadors. How do you think that Cortez came with 500 conquistadors and conquered tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people? Other members of tribes were being enslaved and forced to carry gold as well as being disemboweled and cannibalized. And they said, hey, we're going to go with the guys in the funny, shiny hats. So um, I think it's important then if we do that, I agree with you. I think then we need to recognize the evil, which is a part of the human condition that was committed from all different groups, as opposed to singularly uh, Western culture, Western Europeans, the Americans, the colonizers. The Native Americans engaged in acts of evil. The colonizers did at some point. They did try to trade, by the way, and purchase land, and there were some misunderstandings because they didn't have the same concept of personal property rights. You could certainly argue that in Africa they should celebrate no holidays because of the African slave trade. In the whole Middle Eastern and Arabic world, they still have slavery. My point is that doesn't discredit the positive that we find in a holiday. And I think that history, as being taught here on this campus from what I've encountered, teaches that Western Europeans who came here, the colonizers, are singularly unique for acts of evil that were committed across the spectrum, when the reality is we were singularly unique in ending evil in record time. That's just an opinion. Of course, I think these are all opinions that we've shared here. Um, Not as the history of Thanksgiving, but yes. Opinions on whether we think it's a good thing or a bad thing, sure. I don't think that we should discredit the goods of the Thanksgiving holiday. I don't think it's racist. I don't think that it is inherently a bad thing. I simply think that if we're going to have this discourse, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge, like you said, that it's not all good and it's not all bad. Right. I think that most people don't have that general sense of awareness that it wasn't all good and it wasn't all bad. I mean, you know, most people it wasn't, have the sense of awareness in this campus that it was all bad. I mean, the pilgrims, pilgrims didn't pull up and slaughter everybody. No, of course and not. The natives weren't complete savages, but then it also wasn't just everybody sitting there singing kumbaya around the Thanksgiving table. Of course not. All of these are inaccurate representations. It was at Thanksgiving. That's what's so unique about it. It was yeah. very peaceful. That's why I love Thanksgiving. It shows that it can be done. Right? Isn't that a good thing to, to highlight a, a moment in time of humanity where people came together regardless of cultural differences? I mean, you didn't speak the same language, old world, new world and for 50 years lived in peace and celebrated and traded together. Isn't that something, there's so much negativity out there right now. 
isn't that a good thing to find a silver lining and say, hey, we did it once, it can be done again. That's why I love Thanksgiving. And that's why the reason I say it's not racist is because it is being accused of being racist all across campuses in the country. And some people want to remove it from the national uh, registry of nationally recognized holidays. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, I need to go, so before I do that, I'd like to loop back to my point that okay. on a linguistic and semantic level, saying that Thanksgiving is racist makes absolutely zero sense. Okay. And it's fair for you to argue that Thanksgiving isn't racist, but what people are going to come here, people are arguing about something different than what this sign says when they come and sit down here to talk to you. Okay. And I think it's really important that you know that, but I think you already know that. I don't know what that means. Are you attributing motive? I am attributing motive. Okay, and what motive are you attributing? I mean, I, like I said, I think you know that what college kids like me are going to come sit down and argue to you, and what you're going to argue to us isn't the same thing. I think that we're arguing two different points. I think we are arguing the same points. I don't think we're arguing the same points whatsoever, and I don't think anybody else who comes to sit down and talk to you today is going to be arguing the same points. And what do you think they'll be arguing? I mean, I think they're going to be looking at it from a different perspective. Like I said, or not like I said, like I thought, and if you had to say, my apologies. It's okay. Um, most people aren't going to look at it from a semantic and lingu linguistic perspective. Most people aren't going to sit down and think, what is the well, word I'm, racist? I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm talking no, about the I'm actual talking history about of things. Yeah, no, 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 that's no. why I was very clear in saying there were acts of evil committed all across the board, but Thanksgiving oh, itself sir, is a beautiful I hadn't thing. Oh, sir, I most people aren't going to think, what does the word racist actually mean? And does it make sense for them to pose this question this way? And so most people are going to come and talk about the evils of colonialism sure. and, how the clo and how the colonizers were racist and are going to be arguing about something completely and totally different than what you were going to be arguing for. No, we've already discussed that with several people. We did that here right now. I know. I didn't just... cut you off. You are. You made your points, and I think that we both have had a productive discussion. And I was open to talking about colonialism exclusively outside of Thanksgiving, too. I just think that the issue has been poorly framed, and that if you want to incite an intelligent discourse mm -hmm. about such a prevalent issue, then you should frame it differently. How would you frame it? Because right now you, they want to remove it from the nationally recognized holidays because of it being racist. I disagree, so I'm stating emphatically, declaratively, I don't think it's racist. I think it's a wonderful holiday. How would you frame it? I wouldn't just say Thanksgiving isn't racist, change my mind. I would say, here are the positives of Thanksgiving. I acknowledge XYZ negatives, but I still don't think it's racist. And we had that, I said that in that, this very discussion. But somebody has to come and so sit I, down next to you. That's tough to fit on a sign. It is tough to fit on a but sign. But we talked about it. We did talk about it, but most people aren't gonna come and sit down and talk to you. Those people out there can barely even hear us. But that's their problem. And most of these kids are uber catchy liberal and aren't gonna go watch your YouTube channel to hear what you actually have that's to sad. say. It is kind of sad that most people don't Especially contribute their time to hearing both sides' point of view. But that's just the reality of it. And that's why I have to do the job that it's clickbait admittedly and your thumbnails. own profess professors don't do. It's clickbait and thumbnails and uh, I disagree with you. I don't, think that I don't think that an hour and a half unedited video uploaded is clickbait. But I appreciate you taking the time. Be sure to tune in next Monday for a special bonus edition of Change My Mind. Hey, if you enjoyed this installment of Change My Mind, click one of these other installments in the videos playing in boxes here. That's the only way you'll find them, because if you search Change My Mind, they might not show up because YouTube's deemed them controversial. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see you, but we probably won't.